Welcome everyone to the Ledger Clear Signing RFC session. Uh, please let me start by introducing your hosts and team here today. My name is Carl Edison, uh, VP Engineering at Ledger, and I'll be your MC today. We also have Charles Guimet, CTO at Ledger uh, with us, as well as Laurent Castillo, Chief Architect at Ledger, and Kevin Lambert, our ETH and Software Wallet expert. We have an hour together today, which we will split in two parts. Part one, we will walk you through what is clear signing and uh, what we have in mind. And part two, you have the floor. We want to hear what you think of our propositions and how we could make clear signing a reality. Uh, feel free along the way to pop your questions uh, in the Q&A section at the bottom. If you see a, set, a question that you like, up a vote for it. After we presented our propositions, I'll go through the questions, starting from the top voting ones. You'll have the floor, you'll have the mic, and you'll be able to um, give feedback to us. Uh, this session is recorded as well. So in case you missed it or you're arriving whilst uh, uh, during the show, that's okay. We'll be able to, you'll be able to catch up later on. Um, and uh, last but not least, I just wanted to make sure, because we had a lot of this question on Twitter, um, clear signing is not just about Ethereum. We, we are starting with Ethereum, but we will roll out the same principles to all chains. So it's really important that um, we all discuss and we all agree as to how we're going to implement this because this is going to be our blueprint for all chains. I'll stop here. This is it for the housekeeping. Uh, and without further ado, please welcome Charles. Thank you, Carl. Jim, everyone, my name is uh, Charles Guimet. I'm CTO at Ledger. And today I am going to talk about uh, Ledger Clear Sign All the Things initiative. Uh, this session is really a request for comments. Uh, we are working on this for a couple of months now uh, with different actors in, in the community. And today I'm proud uh, to present where we are uh, and also to collect comments and feedback before we officially launch. So there will be a session at the end for uh, comments and feedback. We are proposing clear, clear signing as a solution to end and security. And the idea is really to make sure that users understand what they sign. And this is really important. We want to promote a safer environment when it comes to Web3. And we think uh, that we can do this together. So you are more than welcome to join us uh, in this journey. We believe that together we can make a meaningful impact and your support and collaboration are instrumental in driving this initiative forward. So let's get started. Um, when you own crypto, what makes you the real owner of your crypto is your private key. So securing this private key is really, really important. That's really what we do at Ledger, developing products that never compromise with security while giving ease of use. And there are basically two main properties to fulfill in order to be secure. On one side, you have a security at rest. And on the other side, you have a security in use. Security at rest means that you generate your uh, private key, your cryptographic materials in the secure environment, in the secure environment, preferably uh, an enclave. Uh, this is what we do at Ledger with uh, our secure element. And security in use means that whenever you use your cryptographic materials, your keys, your private keys must remain in the enclave. But this is not sufficient. As a user, you, you are the one deciding if you want to sign a specific transaction or if you don't want to sign this transaction. Uh, but in order to uh, make this decision, you need to uh, understand uh, what you are about uh, to consent. The Ledger devices are great uh, to implement security at rest. All the crypto libraries are implemented inside the secure element. And when you sign the transaction, you have what we call a trusted display that prompts you uh, to decide if you want to consent to this transaction. This is really important because this prevents a malware on your computer from transforming your device into a signature oracle. And this display can be trusted because it's directly connected to the secure element and compl completely isolated from uh, your uh, rich OS, uh, either your mobile or, or desktop, completely disconnected from uh, the internet. And having a trusted and clear signing is really uh, paramount, but this is complementary to transaction simulation and Web3 uh, firewalls 
these tools are great. Uh, they give you a higher confidence uh, for um, for you when uh, when you are about to to sign something in order to avoid scams. Nonetheless, they don't cover you uh, in case of a malware on your mobile or your desktop. So that's why there's two solutions, like Web3 simulation, uh, transaction simulation, Web3 firewalls, and uh, clear signing uh, are complementary. When it comes to a simple transfer, everything is properly passed by the device and the user can verify uh, what he consents to. And, but the thing is, when uh, it comes to more complex tra transaction, uh, blockchain interaction, the, the device doesn't have access to in the, the internet and cannot properly interpret the raw transaction data. And sometimes attackers, scammers take advantage of this. Today, scams are a huge threat to uh, adoption. They, uh, attackers start always with low on geek foot. They start to ask users for their 24 words, and when it doesn't work, they try to trick them into signing a malicious transaction. And unfortunately, we can see this every day. And signing a hash is um, really equivalent to uh, signing a blank check. Uh, blind, blind signing is an issue uh, that attackers can leverage to trick users. They create a transaction that wallets are unable to interp interpret, and some users consent to sign those transaction and then get drained. And as I was saying, signing a hash is equivalent to uh, signing a blank check or signing a contract without reading any of it. So this is really, really dangerous, and this is something you mustn't do. As of today, most scams are using a common operation, transfers, approval, and permits. And here you have an example of a token transfer uh, and uh, an approval that are blind sign. And as a user, you have no way to understand uh, this operation. There are hashes, and it's uh, impossible to understand these hashes. From uh, this blind signing, we uh, can go to what we call a raw signing. So where addresses, amount are passed, but there is still this input data field that isn't. So it's a little bit more secure, but clearly uh, not enough. We want to go uh, further. We want that users to understand the intent of the interaction and understand with which DAP they are interacting and what is the actual uh, transaction uh, consent. We can even integrate ENS in the clear signing. Here you have a ENS integration. If we go back to uh, permit two example, uh, again, this is not specific to uh, permit two, but let's just take this as an example. So today, the device asks you to simply assign a hash which could be very uh, dangerous, as I, as I said. But tomorrow, uh, Permit2 will give you all the information you need to take an enlightened uh, decision. You will know who is the spender, what's the maximum uh, allowance, and when the uh, approval expires. Even if uh, this is the target, we won't be able to clear sign 100% of Ethereum transaction tomorrow. That's why we will leave uh, the possibility for unsupported transaction uh, to be signed. And you will have a clear signing, a clear warning <laughs> the, that you are about to sign a transaction that couldn't si simply uh, drain your wallet. Uh, there, was a, there was a slight difference from uh, the current implementation and current UI. Uh, now, there, in the future, there won't be um, the option in the settings of the Ethereum app. So we will remove this option and you will be prompted at uh, each transaction. But the goal is really to avoid uh, this, um, this UI and to clear sign as much uh, as possible. To enable uh, clear signing all this interaction, we designed a scalable framework uh, and metadata for format that allows the device to uh, pass properly the transaction and to understand all the chain interaction. Uh, this metadata will be uh, curated and must be trusted by the device. So uh, we have a cryptographic um, protocol that allows uh, to implement this trust. Ledger will be uh, a trusted authority for Ledger devices, but anyone uh, can be a trusted authority. Uh, we want this to be uh, really, really open. And we want all the wallets to clear sign all the interaction in the future. So this is really the goal. 
And for this to be successful, uh, we will need your help. Uh, we will uh, need some help from uh, DAPS uh, to create this uh, curated metadata. And we will need also uh, wallets to integrate our device SDK. And finally, we will need everyone for the governance and the curation for the, the certification authority. So this is really what we want to build. And now I'm giving the floor to Laurent, who is going to uh, go into the details of uh, the format and the protocol. Um, hi, everyone. Very happy to be with you here today. And without further ado, let's dig into what the clear signing format proposal looks like, actually. Uh, starting with actual, uh, with a simple observation that ABIs are not enough, actually. So this is a kind of UI you can build when you have the ABI uh, of the smart contract you're trying to clear sign. And you see it's lacking in many, many different ways. Uh, the function name is actually a very developer-oriented function name and doesn't really carry the, a clear intent for the user of the interaction. Uh, the token itself is in the form of an address, which is uh, not really translated by the user to, um, to a specific ERC20 token. The amount is displayed in the minimum amount and needs to be converted in the head of the user and some parameters are completely useless for users. So definitely lacking in terms of the kind of experience we want to give to end users uh, when we are clear signing a transaction on the device. So from there, we want to get to a far better user experience. And the basic idea we have uh, is to introduce a clear signing format that is going to complement the information contained into the ABI uh, with formatting information, enable, enabling wallets uh, to build the target UI for, for anyone uh, reviewing this transaction. And we have a few guiding principles for, for this clear signing format. First one is that definitely intended for standardization. So it's not a work uh, made by Ledger, uh, for Ledger. It's definitely something we want to open to the ecosystem and where we want to have the maximum number of uh, participants uh, contributing to this, um, this uh, specification. Uh, then we want it to be declarative, uh, meaning with the, all the description is going to be uh, mostly uh, in declaration format, not a programmatic format, so that we are independent from the wallet execution technology. And we also want it to be very human readable so that actually writing the file and reviewing the file is as easy as possible. And it's as, also doable by humans uh, so that we overall improve the uh, security of the, um, of, the, of the system. Then we want to be it to be extensible to any kind of uh, what I call structured data. So any, any kind of data that has a structure associated with it. So for now, the specification covers mostly uh, uh, smart contract function calls uh, or uh, EIP 712 messages, but we definitely intend to open it up to uh, other type of structure data. So uh, 4337 uh, user operation would be an example of this kind of, uh, of uh, structure data, additional structure data we want to cover or any kind of uh, uh, data that has a structure and we want to present to the user for review before signing uh, uh, some, something containing this structure data. So then there's the last point we definitely want to, to open for discussion today. Uh, it, it's a security and governance model for this uh, clear signing format. So we, I've got two slides at the end uh, introducing more a bit what we have in mind around there. So I won't talk a bit uh, too much about it uh, right now, but uh, we have some, some content later. And you can find uh, all uh, all this under specification uh, at the at the current GitHub location here that have, uh, that we've put in the slide, uh, so that you have uh, far more details on on actually the the, the content of the specification and also uh, the examples uh, for this specification. So let's um, uh, sorry let, let's give another view of the of the actual structure of this uh, clear signing uh, format. So this clear signing format, right now we're proposing it as a JSON uh, file, uh, which will contain basically three kinds of, uh, of uh, section, which contain different types of information. First one is the context. The context is really a section that will be used to bind uh, the clear signing format specifically to the message or the, or the function it's supposed to uh, represent. So this, uh, with the information on the context, you will actually make sure that the clear signing uh, format is only applied to the right type of messages and, uh, and function calls. Uh, then you have a metadata section, which basically contains uh, UI constants uh, about, uh, about what you are trying to, to, to clear sign uh, as long as the context applied. So basically the metadata section is uh, data metadata you can trust 
uh, about what you're clear signing as long as the context match uh, what you're trying to clear sign. And the last section is the display section, probably the, the one of the most important in the in the in the clear signing format, uh, which is the section that actually describes exactly how you're going to format each of the fields contained in your structured data, and and provide parameters on on, on detailed formatting for each of the fields of your of your structured data, and that's the section that a wallet can use. Uh, to construct the user interface uh, when when the user is reviewing the the, the data for signature. Uh, let's take a look at what it looks like with a, with with an example. So again, uh, we took uh, the permit to uh, a permit to message as an example. This is a permit to message giving an approval for uh, for uh, for a single spender on uh, your uh, if I remember USDT uh, tokens. I'm not completely sure, but I think that's it. And uh, and uh, this is typically what a permit single uh, permit to message looks like. So, if you display it raw to the end user, still very uh, difficult to understand as we as we discussed. And then this will be what the clear signing uh, format for this specific permit to message will look like. So you would have a context section telling you what the clear signing format applies to. So typically a permit to uh, EIP 712 message with a verifying contract with a very specific address of the verifying contract. You you bind in the context uh, the the message to to its uh, schema. So if the schema doesn't correspond to this, then uh, the, you shouldn't apply the, the clear signing format. Then you have a small metadata section telling you things about the owner or the guy or the the, person, the entity you're interacting with uh, when you're when you're in when you're signing this message. And in the display section. Uh, you basically have uh, the for each single message contained in the schemas uh, the way you're supposed to display each of the field of this uh, of this any message, and we will see a bit more in the examples uh, the content of this section and how it is used to build the user uh, interface. So as a, as a first as, as a first um, trial, uh, let's see how we built the very first screen that you saw in the in the in the clear signing uh, flow uh, before presented by Charles. So you have this, uh, this uh, uh, on, on the on the on the left you have the clear signing uh, format content. On the top right you have the EIP seven twelve message that, that you're trying to review to make the end user review uh, for signature. And then on the bottom right you have uh, what is going to be displayed uh, on the on, on the device of the users. At least what we're trying to construct. Uh, so first the uh, first thing we would do is uh, match uh, the context. Uh, to the message so that you are sure that actually uh, you can apply this clear signing uh, message to the to the IP712 message. Then, then the very first line, uh, you will distinguish exactly what kind of structured data you're trying to review by uh, just by the context that, uh, that is uh, being introduced. So here we, we were saying it's an IP712 message, which means the UI is review message rather than review transaction uh, as an opposite for, for a function call. Um, then you can see that uh, the specific message here we're trying to clear sign the permit single has a clear intent uh, described in the clear signing format, which can be displayed for a, a far better user uh, interface uh, than just displaying this is a permit single message, which is a bit unclear for, uh, for most people. Uh, and then the metadata section can be used to give more details about uh, the, the smart contract you're interacting with when you when you either call a function or sign a message that is targeted for this uh, smart contract, in that case, a verifying contract. So all of this enables you to build this first screen, which is a good uh, uh, first screen for the user as an intent review for, for your transaction. Then we have the screens introducing details about the content of the message itself. Let's see how they are being built. So the first screen uh, contains uh, three, um, uh, three information. The first one is uh, the name of the contract itself, which can be extracted uh, either from the domain name uh, in the clear signing format file or the IP712 message. Anyway, this is the context part, so it's supposed to match. If it doesn't match, you shouldn't be uh, clear signing using this file. Uh, then you have the amount that the user is uh, giving an allowance on uh, to, to, to the spender. And this is, the, this is built, as you can see, from uh, the label uh, of the field that you're trying to describe. And that's so two information, uh, the 
the path to the amount and the path to the token type that is used for, for the fields. And the values of these fields are actually found in the EIP 712 message. And thanks to that, the wallet can actually build a better user interface by uh, converting the amount into the right magnitude for the token and actually replacing the token address with the ticker of the token and, and, and uh, sorry, uh, and uh, concatenating all that together in a single field that makes sense for the user. So far simpler. And likewise, the spender, uh, you can actually have a label to, to explain to the user what this address corresponds to. And here you can see uh, a small trick we have. So you can either display an address or a trusted name for this address. And what we're saying here is that uh, this trusted name can, can be taken from ENS as a trusted source. So if you have a, 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 an ENS domain name that is the, tied to this address, uh, what we're saying here is that we can, you can replace the raw bytes from the address with, uh, with this name, actually. And the last field is the uh, approval expiration date. And here we can we can show that uh, a field uh, which is uh, basically uh, just an integer in Solidity uh, can be converted into a, a date uh, because it's a type step format actually for, for this specific EIP 712 message. So we are just saying, okay, this, this integer field is actually a date uh, with a type step format. So the wallet can use it to convert it to a, to a format that is far more understandable by the user uh, as a date. So this is a... Uh, uh, this is an example. This is the example of um, uh, of what it would look like for an EAP seven twelve message. Now let's look a bit more at the main constituent of uh, of the specification and uh, some of the most important concepts behind the specification. The first one is uh, the field formatting. So field format is really the the, the, the crux of the information contained in the, in the specification and is used to actually uh, tell the wallet how a single field of the structured data should be displayed to the end user. And the type of formats we have introduced in the specification, you can see some of them here. It's not an exhaustive list, obviously, but uh, some of the most important ones are here. So you can replace an address uh, by a name, by telling uh, the user wallet, this is, a, this is, a, this is an address. Uh, you can, uh, as we saw, uh, convert a token amount into a, a, a stream, which is a, a bit more understandable as, a, as a, uh, by converting the amount uh, with a correct magnitude and adding a ticker to it. Then you can also uh, tell the wallet, okay, this is a, this is an NFT name or this is an NFT collection, and you should replace it with a corresponding name for the NFT if you have it, or for the collection if you have it. And you can convert integers in date, uh, either as timestamp or blockades, for instance. Uh, those are the kind of examples you do. So typically, a field, a field description inside the specification will have uh, two things. A label, which is kind of the human readable title of the of the of the of the field you're trying to display to the user, and a format uh, with some parameters that will control the way you transform the value of this field into a displayable string uh, for the users. And all these fields are referenced, and the reference is an important uh, concept in this uh, in this specification because this is an unambiguous way to refer to values uh, in various places uh, that we are interested that are interesting for the wallet. And I will detail a bit more uh, uh, how these reference work in the in the following slide. Uh, before that, let's take a look at all uh, what what some of those uh, field formatting example uh, it would look like in, in real life. So as an, adre uh, an address, we saw it already. For instance, you, you will just provide the label, the format as an address, uh, and you will just provide the trusted sources of these uh, addresses. And if you have any, uh, a trusted source that tells you, okay, this address corresponds to this string, the wallet can replace the address by this string uh, on, the, on the user screen. The token amount will will uh, will be handled a little bit similarly. So basically, you provide um, you attach to the amount uh, uh, the specific token amount format, and then you specify also the path to the uh, to the type uh, of token that is being converted. And this will be used by the wallet to generate the, the the UI on the right that you can see on the right. NFT name same same kind of principle. So you attach an NFT name formatter to the um, to the field uh, that that represents the token ID uh, of the of the of the NFT the NFT ID sorry, uh, and uh, you specify the collection path uh, where where we can find the address of the collection and the wallet can use that to replace either the NFT or the collection name uh, by uh, by a, a displayable string for the user and the date is handled similarly. So you specify that uh, a specific integer string is a date and uh, you specify also the, the, the format uh, of, the, of the date, oh, sorry, not the format of the, uh, of the value. And it's going to be converted uh, by the wallet into a, a real representation of the date. So now uh, I, I talked a little bit about references. So basically in, in, the, in the clear signing uh, uh, format file, 
you'll find a little bit everywhere references to values. And this, this kind of values can be found in three uh, big uh, kind of uh, places. The first one is uh, th those values can be found in the clear signing file uh, itself. So all these references start with a dollar. Uh, this is heavily inspired by JSON pass uh, uh, standard. So that uh, basically all references are JSON pass uh, starting with dollar when it's referencing to the file itself. Uh, then we have references in the structured data itself. So the structured data, the, the structure of the structured data is described in the context by the ABI that is uh, contained in the context. And all references uh, in this structured data start with a uh, an hash. Uh, an hashtag and uh, and uh, the pass itself refers to a pass in the ABI that is linked in the context. And the last uh, type of references we have is that uh, we can also refer to values in the what I call the container of the structured data. So typically, it's not the structured data that you're signing; it's a bigger uh, object that contains uh, the structured data. So in Ethereum, that's typically uh, uh, the transaction itself, which contains uh, the smart contract call data that we are that is the structured data we want to uh, clear sign. And this container data can be referenced to, in some cases, we need the values in this container data to clear sign for the end user. And all those references are starting with at, and here the passes that are available are purely implicit and really depend on the, on the context of the container. So in the spec, we've specified some of them. Um, and just a few examples, uh, real life examples of, uh, of those references uh, for, for what it would look like. So, uh, for instance, uh, here you have a, so on the right you have a, uh, you have the clear signing uh, standard file for uh, for uh, uh, let let me remember for for a staking transaction using uh, using Lido, and on the left you have a real uh, transaction for a uh, the corresponding real transaction for a staking Lido. So on the top you have the, the basic information about the transaction, so, so what I call the container before. And you have the input data to this uh, transaction decoded already decoded uh, using the API. And, uh, and and basically on the right, I wanted to highlight some of the references. So for instance, here in the token pass, we have a, we have a reference to the JSON file itself that tells that, okay, the, the, the type of token that is being clear signed here, uh, you can find the address of this token directly in the, in the clear signing file itself, not anywhere else in the, in the, in the transaction, uh, because actually here, we, your, your, uh, your, uh, your clear signing and ST is a transaction actually here. So uh, the, uh, when you see a reference with add something, this is a reference for, uh, on the container. So here we are saying that we should display the value of the transaction a bit specifically, uh, a bit more specifically for this transaction. And, uh, and, and what you're trying to display is the value of the transaction uh, itself, the real underlying is transaction. And the last is a, is a typical uh, reference to, uh, to the field uh, of the input data here. So, so uh, you, you, you see first that the, uh, the referral refers to, uh, uh, to the ABI itself. The ABI tells you this is actually the first input uh, of the function call you're trying to clear sign here. And this is where you match it uh, inside the structure data serialization itself to work the real value that you're trying to clear sign. With all of that, we have an un unambiguous way to refer to any values in, in what is interesting for a wallet to, uh, to display, the, to create the UI for the user and for the review. Uh, and, and you have an example of what, uh, what it looks like. And you can find examples of that. Uh, you, you have the links to the real life example of these two files uh, that I used for, for this slide. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is all. And uh, we have also added in specification, and this is my last slide on specification, some helpers to make writing the file a little bit easier and a little bit more readable for, for uh, normal human beings. The first one is an include mechanism. So this include mechanism, uh, the basic principle is it works at the JSON level. So when you when you write an include the clause like that, the the the, the wallet is supposed to uh, bundle together all the included files uh, until it gets a final JSON file that is going to be the reference for what you're trying to clear clear sign. Uh, with this mechanism, we, we can build a kind of uh, interface mechanism like I did here. So basically, I have a, a, a JSON file describing a, a basic ERC-20 interface included by all the ERC-20s that don't do any variation to our this interface. I can just uh, basically apply the same uh, uh, clear signing formats. And working at the JSON level uh, enables us to be independent from the structured data uh, type mechanism itself. So we don't need to understand exactly what the, the underlying type mechanism, if there's multiple type of inheritance or whatever. We can just work at the JSON level to have a way to handle this kind of uh, file organization. So very practical in there. 
And the second mechanism we've added is a definition mechanism. So basically in the display section, you can group together the definition, uh, the formatter definition that comes back very, very often. Typically in Spark contracts, uh, there's a lot of function calls that are reusing the same type of parameters and those parameters should be displayed and formatted always the same uh, way. So in those definitions, you can put the, the, the common uh, formatting that, that are coming always uh, very often and very often. And you can see on the right an example of how you refer to these definitions to make uh, very easy the, the, the definition of parameters that come back uh, many, many different, many times uh, in a single file. This makes the, the final resulting file far more readable for, for, for end users. So this is all for the introduction to the clear signing uh, format. And I hope uh, you liked it uh, and definitely open to question after that. Uh, before I give uh, the mic to Kevin, I just wanted to introduce, uh, as I mentioned, the, the governance proposal we have in mind for this clear signing uh, format. So basically, we want to we want to solve two issues uh, with uh, with uh, this kind of uh, this kind of specification: the writing uh, the file issue and the publishing the file issue. Actually, so we want to simplify for the app makers both these uh, these steps. So for the writing part uh, of the of the equation, uh, we want to propose an open source edition tool that will enable you uh, very easily to show uh, to see sorry what is going to be the end result for the uh, for end users of your uh, of your json description file actually so uh, to write the json description file we already have a json schema that will enable you to write the json file uh, very easily in any kind of uh, editor that supports a uh, json schema but in addition you will have uh, you will have an open source edition tool that will uh, visualize for you what what will be the final ui for the end user very powerful to to, to get really the result you want uh, at the end of the day and for the publication, we, we have multiple models in mind that we'll introduce in the, in the following slides. Before that, I just wanted to highlight one thing that Charles already mentioned. We definitely have a curation model in mind uh, for wallets. So we don't expect them to re reuse directly the JSON uh, file written by the DApp makers. We, we expect them to actually uh, review those files before they actually make them available for, for their wallet implementation. So. Uh, however, they, they, they do, uh, the trust of this is actually uh, up to the wallet uh, makers to, to implement. But definitely an open question for that is, uh, how can we mutualize between wallet makers uh, with a trusted review? How can, as, a, as an industry, can we make sure that uh, the clear signing formats that have been um, created are good, of good quality, trusted by everyone, so that we simplify for wallets uh, the, this, this step of uh, the trusted review, actually? And for the publication part, as I mentioned, uh, the, here is uh, some of the model we have in mind. So the, the, the one we would like to propose first is, uh, is a ledger public repository with outside collaborators as reviewers. So we would like uh, in this group uh, to find people that are motivated to be PR reviewers for this, uh, this kind of files. So that we have kind of a, uh, an industry uh, review, review step, but a ledger public repository that is the easiest for us to set up at first, obviously. But we are very well aware that we need to go toward more decentralized models for, for publishing uh, those files. And we have multiple models in mind that we would like to discuss with the group. First one is a, a consortium GitHub organization uh, with a similar type of reviewers. We can also go for the Ethereum Foundation sponsored list, like the, like the chain list that, that exists. Or we can go for a fully decentralized model with a clear signed JSON file published directly under each DApps website. Uh, and in that case, we would have to solve the discoverability issue. So how can Wallet discover when a DApp has published a new clear signing file uh, in that case? So those are the, the models we have in mind and we are very keen on having your opinion on what's the best model for, for, for the industry to, uh, to use here. And that's all for me today. So thank you for listening to me and I'll uh, pass the mic to Kevin who will talk to you about uh, the way you can, as a wallet, uh, clear sign using ledger devices. Thanks, Laurent. Uh, so I, I'll, do, I'll just go through a bunch of questions that, that you might have as a software wallet um, and just try to answer very quickly about it just to make sure that you, you, you get uh, how easy it can be for you to support exactly the same thing as us. And the first one is 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 about this clearly. Uh, how how can you support this kind of clear signing, and how will you support in the future uh, the new standard? And uh, the answer to that is uh, that it's a good news for you that you don't really have to do anything uh, to to support it. Uh, the only thing that you really need to do is to continue using the library that you've been using in the past uh, called Hardware Hub uh, Ethereum. Um, and just upgrade it to the latest version uh, and we'll take care of 
maintaining compa a compatibility layer uh, with everything, so you don't really have to uh, to do anything except using the very basic methods that we already had in the past uh, called sign transaction and, and sign EAP712 message. So it should be fairly easy for you to, to just uh, use that as well. Uh, other question is maybe your implementation is old and you don't really know how to upgrade that thing. Um, we have a bunch of specificities um, li like we saw with MetaMask and everything. So if you don't really know how to upgrade that thing, uh, we can help uh, definitely with that. And we will provide as much support as possible to upgrade your implementation with uh, the, less, the latest version of, of our stack. Um, and we have a good example of that uh, with this PR uh, that we made recently for, for Ruby. Uh, it's, you can take a look at it. It's, it's no rocket science. It's really just uh, like four or five lines of codes just to make sure that you're using the very basic methods again uh, with the latest version on, on NPM. Um, and I will say something that Charles and, and Law already mentioned, but um, the question is, can you use that standard as well? Uh, because it feels like a ledger thing, and, and but it's not. It's really just um, a public good for us. It's something that we hope that everybody in the industry will use. Um, and once it's mature enough, once we uh, discussed all of the points that you may have, all of the comments that you may have uh, on, on the standard, we will have to create some tool to, to read it and, and to make it useful for us. So there is no point in, in keeping that for us. We will open source it and we will make sure that it's usable for you as well. It's usable for everyone. And, and you will be able to use that in your front end. Doesn't really matter if you support Ledger or not. Uh, it should be something that is usable by everyone. And last question. Um, we have a lot of comments saying that sometimes interacting with a ledger device can be difficult. Uh, we know uh, because this library that you've been using is very focused on, on Ethereum and how to interact with uh, one specific uh, nano app. Uh, but the good news is that we have a new initiative in the work uh, and we will be sharing details pretty soon about it. Uh, but to make it simple, it's going to be a way smoother experience uh, communicating and interacting with the device. It should be capable of, of uh, installing apps, loading apps, upgrading the firmware, uh, give you a very clear state of the device. Is it locked? Is it on the right app? Is it on the dashboard or whatever? And it should be fairly easy and, and, a, clearly, uh, and a clear and simple API for you to use. And that's it for me. So I will give, the back, the, give, give back the mic to Charles. Thank you, uh, thank you Kevin. Uh, such teasing at the end. Um, as, as next steps, we are collecting uh, feedback and comments uh, from the community, and this is uh, really the point uh, today. We, we want to make this uh, a public good to secure the ecosystem, and this is, uh, this is really uh, necessary. So any input and proposition on this and also around the governance is, is welcome. Uh, also, we plan to do a, de a demo on stage at HCC uh, this summer. So that would be great to invite a few dApps and wallet maker on stage to show what we did together. And finally, uh, for users, this should be as simple as updating their Ethereum app on, on device uh, to, be, uh, to be covered. Again, in this presentation, we focused on Ethereum and more generally in, on EVM, uh, but the, this initiative concerned all the chains and protocol. We simply want to focus on Ethereum first uh, because this is where uh, we see most of the scams these days. So we uh, start with uh, Ethereum. We thought the protocol, the format as generic as possible uh, to be able to, uh, to, to, to reuse uh, the format on other chain. Uh, but again, this is not uh, Ethereum specific. This is just Ethereum first. And to finish, uh, security remains a very big challenge uh, for our community. Uh, and clear signing, I think clear signing is a fundamental piece uh, to succeed and to secure the ecosystem. So thank you very much for your attention. And now we are open to uh, comments and, and questions. And I, I saw that there are a couple of questions in, in the chat. Oh, already. yes, there are questions. So the top buddy question is a question from Alan. Uh, Alan, actually, I'm going to allow you to talk. You can unmute if you want to. And your question is, is clear signing is only about showing information in a readable way? Or is there also a risk assessment to detect phishing? And so to answer your question, no, it's really about uh, showing the information in a readable way. As Charles said initially, 
uh, when you when you have this big blob of hexadecimals, you don't really know what you're signing. It's equivalent to signing a blank check, and that's what we want to address. Make sure that all users at all times are able to actually read what they're signing. Yeah, but I, th I think there was something uh, interesting in Adam's question. I don't know if it if it was his intent, uh, but sometimes there are uh, scammers who are deploying contract that pretend doing something and uh, that are doing uh, something else. And this is also our responsibility when we are curating uh, the, the the list or when we are curating the metadata to detect such uh, scammy um, uh, smart contract. So there, there was a little bit of both. But it doesn't solve the problem where you approve uh, like address, smart contracts or EOA, and this is like attacker or malicious entity, right? It doesn't tell you this is malicious entity, right. just give you the right address and you as a user need to do the extra work to go to Etherscan or to do the research to make sure it's a legitimate and not, uh, and not a scam address. You are absolutely right. And it's not exclusive. Um, this is really at the signer level. It's providing you information as a user as to what you are signing. Then at the software wallet, you can have extra checks with Web2 Checks APIs as Bluefish or Blocade and uh, all, all the services as you, as you mentioned. It's not exclusive. It doesn't replace. It's in addition. And having one doesn't exclude the other. I think it's also very important. Yeah. Good. And, and also in the curation uh, methodology, if we detect obvious scams, so we will remove them from the from the list already and, and even blacklist them in order that the user is um, aware. So this is something that is possible to do uh, in, in the future. Thank you, Alan. And then we had a question from Adrien. Uh, the question is, I understand that why you start with the EVM, but the risk is that you are building a standard that won't really fit other ecosystems. One example that comes to mind is multi-calls in StarkNet, but maybe there are more from other execution environments. Happy to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you. Uh, Adrien, you're also permitted to talk if you want to. And um, I think as, as Charles said, it's, a, it's an extensible format. Um, I'm not really familiar with multi-calls. I don't know if... if Laurent, you looked at this in more details. Any you have thoughts on this? Yeah, on, on StackNet, you can you can chain calls. So, so not only one uh, smart contract call, but you can have as many uh, calls as you want in the same transaction. So this is what they call a multi-call. And that, that might be a little bit more complex to clear sign, but uh, I don't know. We, we need to go into the details uh, with Laurent, with, with the team. But I don't think what we uh, started to um, uh, to standardize is not compatible with that. And if it requires to extend our specification, we will do that. We will do that. Uh, we, if if it's not generic enough, we will extend the, the format. That would be just an error, actually, if you think about it. Uh, Horrible. But, but yeah, great point. Alain, any, anything else on this one? Maybe I just have this example on multi-calls now, but other people, Calum, uh, comment that for Solana, there might be other examples. I think it's good to gather good these point. edge yeah. uh, um, scenarios before we start on the standardizing uh, rather than later, because then you know, when you start versioning and all that, it becomes a mess. But um, yeah, yeah you, just... you're absolutely right. And this is the purpose of this session. And actually, Calum, I've, I've, I've allowed you to talk if you want to if you want to jump in and, and talk about Solana? Um, yeah, I think the um, issue with Solana is like very uh, similar to sort of how uh, Adrian described the multi-call on, um, on StarkNet, um, just generally about how Solana transactions are sort of like multiple instructions and they're sort of commonly to um, different programs. So I think you'd sort of need a just sort of a lot more flexibility potentially than um, at least some of the examples that you were showing that seem to be like a lot more uh, restricted than you'd sort of typically see in a Solana transaction. Yeah, basically that's exactly the same issue that we will have with 437 in general uh, because you will have matching in mind. So this is definitely something that we already know that we will have to tackle somehow uh it's also true uh, uh it's also true for uh the the next version of of uh, the potential transaction type for uh in ethereum uh with 7702 um, that's also something that will be coming so there is 
plenty of use cases where we will have to, to work on that. And, and I don't think it's problematic for now. It's just that it's going to be bigger and more inclusion and, and maybe dynamic inclusion uh, that we will need to, uh, to do. But uh, I, I don't see that as, as uh, a problem for now, at least. What could be a, a problem is really the UI. Like if the transaction yeah. contains plenty of calls and and so on, that could be tricky to present this to the user so that he can he can take a decision. So that could be also a, a tricky part. And maybe performance wise for uh, for for the for the nano, right? I mean, uh, it it becomes uh, I don't know if it's exponential or linear, but uh, it you know like you you may need the resources to kind of handle. JSON within JSON within. And we already had this this uh, thing for EIP 712, I think, mm -hmm. where we stream the data because the, the, the data can be almost unlimited in, in, in terms of sizing. So yeah, yeah, we, we already have a bunch of solution, I guess, for, for that as well. To the next question, which is, will Nano S support this or will it be stacks only? So this won't be supported by the Nano S because the Nano S, we, we have very limited uh, resources, as Adelian was mentioning earlier. Uh, but it will be supported by uh, Legend Nano S Plus, by Legend Nano X, and Stacks. Yeah, totally. For for the Nano S, we continue the support of the Nano S, but all the new features that we implement on the S Plus and X, uh, it's like technically impossible, very, very difficult to uh, fit them on the S. So the the general policy uh, for now on the S is really to uh, to keep the same level of support that we had in the past. But, but not to uh, implement new features when it's uh, when it's too complex. And this is the case most of the time. And it, it would be the case uh, for clear signing. Okay. This is just sort of tied up with something else that was in my mind about uh, where these things are going to live. I presume that these uh, configuration files are going to be sent to or live on the device. I'm just wondering what your projections are on the growth of that. Design The current design we have in mind, at least for the Nano, so I will talk for other wallets, uh makers but definitely we, we we will use these files and transform them in a in a, in a format that is a bit more uh, streamable for the nano uh, so basically they will be stored outside of the nano in what we call the crypto asset list uh, currently and uh, bay uh, and but and the overlaying uh, and, and uh, sorry the, 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 the wallet calling uh, the nano device uh, will have to stream this this information to the nano itself which will be made easy uh, by what by the device SDK that Kevin mentioned uh, that will uh, facilitate uh, doing that for wallets actually. Uh, you are about to sign the transaction with Uniswap. So uh, the raw transaction is sent to the device along with the metadata corresponding to uh, Uniswap so that the device can uh, properly part the, the, the transaction. So this is uh, how it works. Just to give you an idea, uh, in the flash of the Nano X, which is the biggest one we have, there, there are two megabytes uh, for the for the operating system, for uh, for the, the the application, for for everything. So we do, we couldn't fit all this metadata inside the device. So we have to stream them uh, along with the the the, tra the raw transaction. I just want to open up as well and say that this is our implementation. This metadata is for the entire ecosystem. So. Um, Treasure could use it, and they could have a different implementation. So we are, and we, and we are, we actually are talking with them as well. Um, so it's an open format, really. But this is our implementation here. Yeah, good point. Very good point. Next question we have is from Matchstick. Uh, why channel should we use for comments on the spec? I don't think we can get to everything on this call. Yes, absolutely not. No, definitely not. So. Uh, when you sign up for the, I think there are two things. So first of all, the spec is on GitHub. Uh, so, you know, through the normal GitHub channels for sure. Uh, but it doesn't stop here. Uh, as you uh, as you sign up on the Luma, I should get here. We got your email. So we got, we'll be communicating communicating with you guys. We actually are thinking of either creating, a mix, it's not either, it's probably both. But at least start with the Telegram group so we can all talk um, about the clear signing initiative as a, as a group. Uh, and then we could also create a, a I'd love to create a Slack channel where we could actually partner, send examples, and, and really go into the, the details um, of implementation and support the entire ecosystem to to move towards banning all exadecimals uh, from our wallets. Uh, we've got a question from Daniel. Will this be available initially only for the Ethereum app or also apps that are directly based on the Ethereum app, like the Polygon? Uh, no need to mute. Okay. Uh, so we will be doing that on the Ethereum app uh, initially, but the 
yeah, you're right. So if, if you have a spin up in spin off app like the Polygon one, uh, it's, this won't be able available in the Polygon one. But for all the layer two chains that are using the Ethereum app to sign, uh, this would be available. Yeah, for for EVM, that will be very easy to to extend. Uh, maybe Kevin, you want to? Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that uh, anyway, the Polygon app and the BSC app, they will disappear very soon. And we will focus on, on just maintaining everything with a single app. And it's going to be the Ethereum app anyway. So it's the same app. It's just we will allow more things into the main one. Yeah, as an FYI, the, the Polygon app only enforces the chain ID. That's yeah. pretty much all it does. Uh, so it makes some sense. All right, thanks, Daniel. Uh, then we have a question from Paku. Um, Paku, Zcash Wallet Community Developer, thanks for this presentation. Could you share resources to read about the spec, how to contribute and participate actively? And I see that Adelian already shared the, the link to the GitHub. So thank you, Adelian. Uh, and thanks, Paku. And then we have MXS. Uh, if it's meant to be human re understandable, readable, JSON is a weird choice as it does not support comments. Maybe considering other formats would be a good call. Uh, we're not planning to serve the JSON as is. Uh, the JSON is just a, a, a format to hold the metadata, uh, which will then be parsed and used by the, the hardware wallet to actually display it in a human readable form. If that's, uh, if I got the question right, and MX says, I'll give you the floor in case you, you want to add to this. When you write a plugin or the equivalent of a plugin, uh, you probably have to, I don't know, uh, write some comments about why, what is, what this call, specific call you are describing is doing on the smart contract or something. And so as a developer, you won't be able to put those comments if it's JSON, whereas if it's, uh, I don't know, YAML or something else, there, there would be this possibility. I, I'm not talking about what, what happens on the interface afterwards, more like at the mm -hmm. end stage. Okay. I see what you mean is in the metadata, be able to add comments. I feel very good point. Yes, and I think uh, the, the, the schema we have is uh, is very simple and should be uh, easy to port potentially to other uh, uh, other stu uh, other structure other languages. Uh, that's a good, good thing to try actually. Yeah, great point. I have someone to 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 try uh, on on a small example to see what it will look like uh, and if it would be better. Uh, that uh, that's for sure. So. In this case, you, you, could add a, you could add a field that is comment that you don't pass afterwards, still possible. I think there is also a standard where you can use JSON with comments. Uh, at least it exists in, in VS Code. Uh, I don't know exactly how we can uh, allow that specifically, but, but maybe there is a way to just cheat a little bit and, and, and add this kind of thing also available directly in the, uh, in the standard as is. Uh, but there is definitely no no nothing preventing us from starting from a YAML or, or anything and, and transforming it into a JSON so it can be stored uh, at least um, in a backend or, or somewhere uh, in the same way for everyone, but, but starting from a different format. It's a great point. We, we take your point, uh, the need for remarks and comments within the metadata. Uh, don't have an answer yet, but that's normal. That's what, that's what this conversation is for. <laughs> so thanks, man. Uh, moving on to the next one, which is a question from Justin. Um, is there a concern that decentralized open curation will become a risk in and, uh, and of itself? Are there potential mitigations uh, being considered for participants that build trust then collude to submit misleading descriptions? Those are two different topics. So on one side, we, we really want to have like uh, like an open, open, da open database with, uh, with a decentralized curation and so on. But at some point, I really think it's on the, resp the responsibility of the, uh, of the wallet right. to actually sign or not uh, a specific metadata. Uh, Ledger will uh, sign the metadata uh, that he, that we think is uh, is, is good and uh, and not dangerous, but we we don't we won't sign everything that is uh, in the in the database database. And also, we want this to be open. So as a user, I think uh, it will be. It must be possible in the future to decide if you only want to trust Ledger or if you want to trust someone else who will uh, curate and sign this metadata. So this is the way we see it. First of all, I just want to say I applaud the fact that you're doing this as an open standard as well. So I really appreciate that. 
And I think that makes sense. What about the idea of like, a, would you have an aggregated trust score depending on how many software wallets choose to approve something, for example? And then you could display that to a user. Or... Oh, it's 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 a good one. Good idea, uh, yeah. And but again, this you you have to 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 find the balance and the trade off between uh, like uh, trusting people and um, and avoiding like uh, like uh, additional risk. But it's a, it's a good idea. So. Uh, at first, we Ledger will be the like trusted authority for this met metadata that we will serve to our devices, not for the database. And then we we can think we can think about a different trust model with uh, with uh, other wallets. It's a, it's a good idea. And again, I mean, if we get there, it's actually it's, a, it's already a victory. Uh, yeah, totally. Because, because right now it's just hashes, and this is where the exactly. scams are coming from. Right? Uh, yeah. Is what we're saying. So. Uh, as always with security, it's a cat and mouse game, right? Which is, just means that we would have moved the lines. So it's always a step forward, I think. It doesn't solve everything, though. I totally hear that. Yeah, it's never ending. Cool. Uh, Matchstick has another question, which is following up to MXS. I believe the spec should be split into two formats, one that is more human-friendly and the stricter one that is implementation-friendly. Features like JSON merging, uh, common field definition, etc., add noise and complexity to parsers. That could be a, a common compiler tool that handles this complexity. At the same time, it would be nice to have a hard spec on the strict part of the format so that we can plug the compiler into a pipeline. I think it's a good, it's a good feedback. Uh, let's let's uh, take some time to to consider this. I I really uh, take this as a very good feedback from this session. Yeah, definitely. And, and as we're going to see more and more metadata as well, and, you know, get into practical examples, we'll we'll, we'll see more. I'm always cautious also. about optimizing, you know, before, <laughs> but, but yeah, no, absolutely. And then we have another one from, uh, Matt Schick. Uh, any consideration for translating the human facing text? Oh, oh right question. I, I get, I can take this one. So definitely uh, because it's been, uh, it's been flagged by one of the, uh, my, one of the, my own guy actually. So uh, in my team, so definitely, uh, internationalization is one of the missing part currently in the, in the specification. So I would say it's uh, there's, there's, there's a few missing parts that we are very well aware of in this specification. That's why we are, but, but it's at a stage where uh, it's, uh, let's say, uh, complete enough that it, we can open it to discussion, but there's missing part. Internationalization is definitely uh, one of it. So we must find a way to, for the apps to provide potentially translations for the, for the, for the text uh, in various languages uh, when they want to. Um, but also keep the uh, keep keep the possibility open to have just one single uh, English reference, uh, which which would cover uh, maybe uh, most of the use case. So Kevin, seems like you want to add to this. Yeah, yeah I just yeah, I feel like yeah, because this standard is not meant to be uh, one one all the time. There is no reason for us to not have multiple version of the same thing uh, for for the same contract and same methods. So we could have a, just like a very basic thing where. We try as much as we can to have uh, a localized version for you, but if we don't find it in your local language, we will just fall back to English. Uh, but it's it's the same file basically, so there is no reason for um, having some very complex thing where you need to have a, a key that will be resolved somewhere else on on a big JSON on another big JSON right. file. Uh, we could we could have plenty of the same thing uh, just for your language and any, any other. Yeah, may maybe adding the local to the context is, is the easiest solution for that. Yeah. So, and, and have a one file per per, per language. So, and we yeah. can just always call back to English when we don't have uh, your language. Yeah, all of this is uh, is possible technically the way we thought about that. But uh, we have translated our operating system, and it's already it's already a lot of work to maintain and so on. So we have to keep this in mind as well. But the the, the way we have uh, created the specification makes this possible. And and also, uh, if you want to extend uh, the the current the the, yeah, the 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 current metadata that we will have. Uh, it will be possible with with the fact that you can trust your own database. This is still something uh, extensible in this uh, in this manner. I guess this is the last question, right? Cool. Yes, that was the last question. So we went through all of them. Thank you so very much for your attention. We're also over time, so I think it's time for us to wrap it up. Um, thank you for the feedback. As I said, you all subscribe to uh, to the Lumine uh, event. Uh, in there, we have your email, so we'll be in touch with you guys. And we need your help. 
I think it's really the key thing. So next step for us is we to start talking and collaborating on, on this format, all feedback welcome. Um, and the next step for us is really to present this to the world together at EPCC. Um, so please do stay in touch and re please reach out.